Well, um, I've been thinking about John Jones. Um, he has, he's gotten in trouble again. This time it was abusing his wife. He's got, he, for, for those who are listening, who don't know who John Jones is, maybe you, you don't know martial arts. He's, you know, considered one of the best martial artists, like really of all time, which is, which is crazy. Um, he's in the UFC, hasn't been active in a long time. And he's a very, very troubled individual. And he just recently uh, was elected or not elected, um, Hall of Fame, right? He was he was inducted, yes, inducted into the Hall of Fame for one of his fights. I can't remember which. Gustafson. Would you know off? It was the one with Gustafson. Okay, so um, he had just gotten his award. He, you know, went back to the hotel, told his in Vegas. wife that, yeah, in Vegas, of course. That actually really matters in this one. Okay, so in Vegas, told his wife, "Hey, I'm going to go out. I'm taking ten thousand uh, dollars. I'm going to go out." Comes back, they get in an argument at like five in the morning. He hits her. She goes down to the lobby. The security guard notices the blood on her face because she um, asks to change the room. Key. Right. It was a cry for help. It was a well. She. I, that's actually true. She. She didn't want to go back to the room with him. I think she wanted a different. Or wait, did she want to lock him out? I think she wanted to lock him out. So by changing the okay. room key, he wouldn't have been able to get back in. And she went down, and the one of the daughters was there with her. Yes. And I think, you know, that also could have been like a, hey, I'm I'm in trouble, like I'm scared type of thing also, right? It's yeah, a lot she of times. Said, the, the wife said, can we just get a new room key? And the guy mentioned, do you need any assistance? And she kind of said no, but she also said that she didn't want to go back up. And then it was the daughter. Yeah. The daughter was the one that said, can you call the police? Right. Yes. That's yes. Fucked. I know that was that. I think that was the the chill video that you sent me. That was the 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 part that really it makes the know, hairs on the out. back of your neck stand up. Like yeah, your, your own daughter. Your daughter is calling the police, the police on, on you to stop you from hitting her mother. Yeah, like so crazy. So he's a very 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 troubled man, and we can talk about like you know what he should do or shouldn't do or what should happen. But something that's very interesting to me is um, this was something that Daniel Cormier, who's now, uh, you know, an analyst and, uh, you know, just a a figurehead at the UFC. Um, He was a a heavyweight champion or super heavyweight champion uh, in the UFC. I don't know. He defended it a couple times. He lost the belt, got it back. But um, he had a few fights with John Jones and one of the things that he said in his interview, he ended up kind of predicting the future. And I'll just play the clip. Um, I'll play the audio here. I want to hear my reaction. Please. He, he doesn't want to hear my reaction because I will tell him some sober and truth. Please. Sober and truth is his history dictates and determines that the same thing is going to happen. That is his character. That is him at his core. I look at that young lady, the PR lady that's on his team now, and I see in her eyes, she knows she's fighting a losing battle. <laughs> I look at his coaches. I see that these guys know that this kid will not change. He won't. He will not change. He's the same guy. He's rotten at his core, and he will continue to f- up. Don't you think that people can learn from their mistakes? Mistakes, mistakes. You don't constantly make mistakes. No. You make mistakes, but you don't do them over and over no? and over and over. No. No. Says who? You don't do that. Says if you who? know when a mistake, when you make a mistake, it changes you. You try to make yourself better. Not necessarily. And this is many times we've heard this speech, Jonathan. Pretty. Unbelievable. When that gave that? me the chills. So that was, I believe, two years ago. And John had already been in a lot of trouble. And DC says he's rotten at his core and he is bound to repeat. History will repeat itself with this man. And look at what we're doing. We're talking about this. I thought that that was the most effective. Like, I, I have not seen something like that. That To me, that was chilling. And what I wanted to talk about with you, Chris, is what, well, I guess first let's talk about redemption for someone like John Jones. And my theory is that he has to almost, he has to let go of his identity completely. He has to do penance, you know, whatever that is. If he has to go to jail, whatever that is, you know, um, if that's monetary, 
but he has to lose his identity as a fighter and as a party goer and has to change his his life entirely in order to recover from this and you know this type of behavior for someone in the real world someone who doesn't have the money that John Jones does doesn't have the fame and notoriety that John Jones does this type of behavior leads to jail time leads to death leads to other people if being he was some injured. normal black man out in the world of America he's fucked Oh, 100%. So my thing is this, is like, if he is to move on from this, it has to be a complete and utter spiritual and mental psychological change from, from where he has to go from there. The second, so, so the second part I want to talk about is what determines whether someone is a good man or a bad man based on their actions? How many actions does it take? Is redemption possible at all the time? Does it, does redemption become harder to to get uh, the more you fuck up? And that's that's what I'm curious about. Someone like John Jones is like I, even though this position that he's in right now, even though I still like to think that there's a potential for redemption at least within himself. How old's John Jones? I'm not. I'm 34. not entirely sure. Has thirty fucking four, bro. There's no, there is no time for him to turn his life around and come back. How many chances is this guy being given? Didn't he get, he got popped for some sort of PEDs? Like, yep. if you want to tick off all of the big things that you shouldn't do as an athlete, whether it be well, recreational a- drugs, whether it be performance enhancing drugs, whether it be getting into misdemeanors, he hit a pregnant woman in his car. He shot a gun outside of the window of one of his cars. He was belligerent to the police. When he got arrested this time, after this incident with his missus and he had the cuffs on behind his back apparently turned to the four police officers and said i'd love to see if you four like pussies could take me on your own if you undid these handcuffs i've just been inducted into the hall of fame then he headbutted the police car so he's now got to pay for the damages to the police car so Mm -hmm. like the guys are bad what i what i'm saying of course what i'm saying is though is like that whole being a fighter thing's gone like in my opinion to be an, uh, to come back, maybe. I mean, who knows? In this weird world we live in, you know, like OJ Simpson is one step away from getting a celebrity boxing match. Like that's how fucking weird this world is. Is he? Okay, I don't know. You know, it, it's like you, <laughs> so you, you never know what yeah. can happen. You you know what I'm saying though, right? Like <laughs> Jake Paul, Logan Paul, all this stuff. They're they're headliner. They're they're big martial artists now. Yeah. Like it's it's crazy. I was thinking more along the lines of like John Jones just disappears, just disappears out of the limelight and changes who he is. I think in as order far to survive as, in this world, as far as the US, I'm wondering is concerned, if that's possible. That's already happened. So people mentioned this. They said a few years ago, John Jones could lord it over people like Danny. Because one of the reasons that he said he wasn't going to come back is because he wanted to get paid a million dollars for a fight and the UFC don't seem to be quite good with fighter pay that's a big criticism that they often get so john said i'm gonna wait because i can hold out because i can negotiate he forgets yeah. man this sport this sport moves so fast they don't fucking need john jones anymore the sport doesn't no, need they him. they haven't needed him in the heavyweight division for a long time and he continues yeah. to fuck up and continues to be out of the game so I, I don't see where his leverage comes from with regards to that i don't think that people care i don't think the ufc need him i don't think the world need him like if you're not going to be a good athlete, what you can be is a good ambassador or a good role model for people to look up to, young kids. You know, let's say the Cormiers of the world. Like, or, yeah, he, Cowboy Cerrone is another. Is another yeah, Cerrone, or yeah. fucking Khabib. The guy retired at the peak of his career. So mm-hmm. he's no longer an athlete in the MMA, uh, in the UFC, but he can be a really good ambassador for people to look up to. John Jones has fucked both of those things. He's no longer an athlete. Yeah. And he's not a, a, a role model for people to look up to. I don't want my future kids to be looking up to John Jones as the sort of athlete that they should try and aspire to be. Fuck that. So yeah, in terms of but, that, correct. And then in terms of how much redemption you need, how much you would need to do to undo all of the bad work, I don't think anyone can... I, don't, I, I would always try and give somebody the opportunity to try and achieve redemption. I don't think that anybody can be a lost cause apart from like psychopaths and people that are in prison and rapists and stuff like that. And, uh, yes, and that's what I mean is like, I think a lot of times people want redemption fast because that's how the world works now, right? It's like, I want to be back in the limelight, but I want to be in your good, uh, on your good side. 
And what's missing there is the penance. What's missing there is the shame. And given what, given John Jones's past, that shame and that penance, that, that has to take years. I mean, I would say this, Chris, as much as you would say, there's no possible way this man could redeem himself. What about 10 years from now? But what you know, does redemption 10 years look like from now, to you? And, and I don't, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. And that's why I, 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 it's interesting to me. I like to talk about things like this because these are things that are almost outside of the scope of human nature is like long-term feelings about someone else. I have this feeling that people want to be on the winning side. So for instance, if, if you fuck up, I want to naturally be on your side outside of being my friend, someone I care about. I want you to be on top of whatever that is. I want you to come out on the on the good side of that because it I want to be a winner too. You know, it's like and and that's not like a it sounds very self-indulging, but I'm not trying to be. It's like I think people want redemption. I think people want kind of You mean you they want people to achieve redemption? I think so. So I think, I think so. You're maybe right, man, but there's only so many times that you can of course. let that happen. You know, the cheating boyfriend in the relationship, the wife might be able to take him back the first time or the second time or whatever. But after five times, you go, this isn't a misdemeanor that requires redemption. This is an inbuilt part of your nature. This yeah. is just you. And here's another thing. I think that where you're coming at this from is maybe the same as me, which is an inherent belief that people are good an inherent hope that people are here to try and be good people, like to contribute mm -hmm. to society in a way that's fucking constructive and leave the world in a better place than they found it. I think we need to concede that there are some people out there who don't do that. Like there are yeah, some people who simply, if you leave them in the world for long enough, they're going to continue to make it a worse and worse and worse place. Yeah, and like the, the crazy thing about all of this is like this position that I'm playing right now it's just a position that I'm curious about. I'm thinking through it. This is not how, you know what I mean? And I just want the listeners and viewers to kind of understand that. I, I like to think about things from, from a lens that I may not think about in real life, you know, when it happens. Yeah. I've been fucked over. You've been fucked over. I'm sure both of us have fucked over some people. Um, and they have every right and you have every right and I have every right to move on from that person. Um, but I still like to think about the potential for someone to make some sort of a comeback. And, you know, this is just a thought because, like, Jesus, John Jones really has fucked up the most of anyone in his sport that I could even think of. Here's a question for you. Is it still acceptable to call John Jones the goat when he behaves privately in the way that we've seen? Can you separate the art and the artist? No, I, I, I never called him that. And basically because of that. So you think that, he you know, is Joe Rogan had no, it's, it's very weird. Now we're talking about morality and ability. All right. So fighting you know? talent in the, in the octagon, is he the greatest of all time? Well, I don't, I don't know. I mean, possibly. Who's it? Between? Possibly. It would, it would be between him. I think Khabib. Uh, we're looking at Valentina Shevchenko, who's doesn't seem like she's going to lose anytime soon. Um, who else would be on that list? A lot of it has to do with title defenses, I think. That's one of the you know, criticisms guy, that Khabib gets, right? That who did he right. fight that he did a title defense against that was actually world right. class, whereas John Jones, pretty much everyone that he did a title defense against was world class. Yeah. Right. Um, and then also... Conor McGregor didn't have many title defenses, if any. Did he have any? None, right? I think that was his main criticism, too. But, um, yeah, you know, I I don't know. It was just very, very strange. And, and the whole thing is eerie, dude. It's just like something needs to change. Like, what, what would you do if you were John Jones's friend? If he has any friends. I don't even. I think I would have given up by now. 
Yeah. I think that I get quite personally invested in my friends and in their well-being. Right. And after a while, after well, it depends how long. If you've only just become friends with him this week, then maybe you've got a bit of tolerance left in the tank. But yeah, I would have... Um, right. There's only so far that you can try and take people. And it's like, look, man, like this is your shit. I would have tried to have an intervention. I would have tried to sit down with him. I would have tried to do whatever. It seems very much like he's hugely narcissistic. Like he has very little empathy for other people. Oh, of course. Yeah. And with all of those things piled together, it's like, look, man, like, this is your fucking problem. If you're big enough to hit a woman, you're big enough to get yourself out of all of these messes that you got yourself into. So, yeah. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you enjoyed that, then press here for the full unedited episode. And don't forget to subscribe. It makes me very happy indeed. Peace. <laughs>